Bis dann. Oops. Yo, 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 what's up? Welcome back. <laughs> Average Bros, Fantasy, <laughs> Football, Podcast. Week two is in the books. It's your boy T here. We got a full a full house here. We do. We got a full fucking house. Call me John Stamos. John Stamos. <laughs> As always, it's your boy T here with Mr. Miyagi. We got a special guest, John Stamos, in the house. Live in the flesh. Hey. John Stamos, but with a bigger wiener. Making a special guest Maybe. appearance. No, John Stamos probably fucks. That doesn't mean okay, he has John a big Stamos wiener. for sure fucks. <laughs> Dude, imagine how much pussy that guy probably got back in the I day. I bet you he's won 100% he's of his fantasy gets, football league. He's back in the day. <laughs> God, I wish... If he was on my fantasy team, I'd be crushing it right now. Fantasy yeah. celebrities? Yeah. All right, so Average Bros, Fantasy Football Podcast. Yep. Week two, like I said, in the books. Season two of the Average, fantasy, Average Bros, Fantasy Football Podcast. We're, this is episode 18 of season two. This isn't episode 18 of our podcast. This is episode 18 of season two. Yeah. It doesn't feel like we've done 18 episodes already. So it's like 2.18. I, mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you definitely have not, but it's okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you're a busy boy. Busy oh, you're a busy boy. Oh, you're a busy, busy, you busy, busy, busy boy. Busy we boy. all know what we're saying right now. <laughs> There's some people out there who are probably laughing. <laughs> <laughs> For no, sure. It's... All right, so week two is finally in the books. Uh, a lot of injuries, so we're just going to go over that. We're going to go over kind of what we have learned so far. It's only been two weeks, but you've kind of seen how things are, are kind of like forming and developing for a certain team. So we're going to go over that. And then we're also going to touch on over the waiver wire for week two. Um, so I, just, I guess the two biggest injuries right off the top right here, you got Big Ben. He's out for the year. I think something about like he's he's got a gay elbow or something like that. Yeah, they did for the year. Yeah, they did the MRI. Uh, they and looked it, at it and <laughs> it has a benign tumor, but it's um <clears throat> specifically benign tumor that it's got uh, it's, it's got the gay gene in it. So he got gay. Uh, yeah. He got gay. <laughs> then he went to get a second opinion, and the doctor was like, "Yep, uh, it says you're a piece of shit." Yeah, <laughs> I just think it's karma for him being a piece of shit, <laughs> dude. After all this, AB knows you still think it's Big Ben's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he wanted good. to say no, but he's like, fuck, no. Yeah, fuck, fuck Big Ben. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Big Ben, he goes down for the year. Some of his elbow is going to have surgery on it. And then you also have uh, Drew Brees. Drew Brees? Uh, his fingers hurt. My fingers. He's going to, he tore a ligament in his thumb. So he has to get surgery on that. He'll be out for about like six weeks or so. Yeah, I think what I heard uh, was reading something today where it's like, if they put him on IR, he's gone for eight weeks. So they're gonna try and avoid putting him on a, uh, IR possibly. Yeah. So if he goes on IR, he's gone for eight weeks for sure at least. But if he doesn't, he could be back sooner. Sooner. So what's like the impact you guys feel for these teams going forward without their their franchise? I mean, both of them, you know, future Hall of Fame quarterbacks. I mean, let's start on the Steelers side of the ball here. Big Ben goes down. So you got Mason Rudolph. He comes in. He actually looked pretty decent when he came in. Yeah, he does. He didn't look bad. He looked like ready. And I, I think it's that it goes to, to show kind of like how much better it is when you have a quarterback kind of sit back and actually watch like a veteran QB get it done the way yeah. Pat Mahomes did with Alex Smith. He's seen Miss Mason Rudolph. He went behind a quarterback like Big Ben, who said who basically said like, "Not nah, do this to me." Fuck off. So yeah, like <laughs> fuck you. So he probably wasn't even thinking he was gonna play. He maybe ha even had like a chip on his shoulder a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but I think we 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 talked. We wrote a little post about it. But I think that this could be a big sign for uh, James Washington. They went to school together at Oklahoma State. Um, I don't know exactly how good their rapport was there, but I mean just them going to college together. That's big. I mean, we saw it with Cooper Cup and uh, what's his name? Jared Goff. They yeah. shared the room together when they went in training. So, Yeah, back when they used to double-team girls. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think um, uh, Rudolph, I mean, Mason Rudolph looked pretty good. I think he's actually going to be he could be not bad. He could know? be a streamable quarterback. Yeah, I, I think, think he'd actually be pretty decent. Yeah, um, this is his third year in the league, right? Second. Second? Because Josh Dobbs, they drafted uh, that's, yeah, like yeah. three years ago. And then Mason Rudolph, they drafted last year. He, well, yeah, and he, th he threw two touchdowns to Vance, right? Or was that Ben? Uh, no, he, threw he threw, I think, he, I'm pretty sure he threw both to Vance. He had Vance dancing? Yeah. 
his and his, I think his, that his. we also touched on that too is like you know these inexperienced quarterbacks they a lot of times they rely on these tight ends just to, as like kind of like someone to just dump it to and they know they're gonna get these catches because no matter even if they throw bad they're big enough they're gonna just catch it yeah yeah I think what it does is like for like fantasy purposes uh, yeah I think that James Washington can definitely be someone be something I mean what's his name Dante Moncrief has been terrible they basically benched him after like yeah. uh, I think I think like he had like a drop and they basically benched him after that so he's he's in a sense gonna be running a lot more snaps going forward so yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll get into some, probably getting him or whoever in the waiver wire, but I think it does. It definitely does hurt Juju a little bit. He loses that. I mean, he could still have games where he goes out and gets like one fifty and one or like two touchdowns, but I think it takes off like you know the, the Steelers would say at a points per game basis with Big Ben are going to definitely score more points with Big Ben than they are with you know Mason Rudolph. I don't want to say definitely, but more than likely. So it kind of takes off like the total points scored for the teams, which in a sense kind of hurts Juju's ceiling. He's still a top 12 wide receiver in my eyes, but, you know, he was kind of like a, you know, fringe top five guy. But I think he does take a little bit of a hit when, you know, not having Big Ben anymore. For sure. So with that, are, are you panicking? Are you trading Juju? Or are you trying to maybe like if someone has him and they're, now they're panicking, maybe you try to swoop him up on the low? You can probably get him for cheaper, obviously, than you would have normally. Yeah, I mean, he's still going to be the target hog over there. So uh, I... I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind trying to get him. You just got to see what you're going to, like, make some offers I think, for it. I just think that you're not going to get, like, it's still early, too early in the season. People, this is what I've come, like, because I, I, obviously you put in a lot of trades. You try and trade a lot, but I've been doing it more. And I notice is, like, if someone drafts Juju in the second round, like, early second round, there it's going to be hard for you to, like, get them to depart. Yeah. Even, even if they have terrible week one and week two. It's gonna be hard to get get the value you want out of them. Yeah, for sure. You never know though. Send it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not too panicked. Like I said, just ultimately, I'm Juju. I'm not too panicked on it. He's still a top twelve receiver at the end of the day. So yeah. it's like, but he does lose that. Like I said, he does kind of lose that ceiling to kind of keep up with like you know the Julio's, the Devonte Adams, Hopkins. You know, you can't really put him in that. Uh, like I said, there's no guarantee, but you can't really put him in that conversation anymore with the loss of Big Ben. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what this kind of does for me, it does kind of just open the door for James Washington, like you said. I mean, here's a guy who's a, he was a sleeper for us uh, coming into the year. Um, he's 40% available. We'll touch more on that kind of when we go through the waiver wire. So he's out there. And, um, I mean, you know, like you said, him and Mason Rudolph, they, you know, went to college three years at Oklahoma State together. And you want to say, like, how good the rapport is between the two? I mean, James Washington won the Bolitnikoff Award, and that's the nation's the who? Uh, best. <laughs> the, the Bolitnikoff? <laughs> Every time I say you do. The <laughs> <laughs> the Belenikov Award. And who was his quarterback? It was Mason Rudolph. Um, and just some stats. I was looking at James Washington. And, and I know it's preseason, so it's kind of dumb. But he was the second best wide receiver in preseason. And he had a 20.8 yards per reception. So he's a deep threat guy. You know, like you're thinking like Deshaun Jackson, like a Tyreek Hill kind of guy. That's who he is. And, you know, if he has the rapport there, like you said, Moncrief is just not, he's just not getting it done. And, and, you know, if if I'm the coach, I'm asking Rudolph, like, hey, well, is it going to help you if we – throw James Washington in there more because, you know, Moncrief's not getting it done, and he's telling me, yeah, coach, like, I want him in there. That's my guy. I, you know, it only makes sense to put a player in there when they have the chemistry like that. So an interesting pickup this week. Uh, let's touch on uh, Drew Brees right here. Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Uh, torn ligament in the thumb. Uh, um, so Teddy Bridgewater comes in. He's actually the highest paid backup quarterback in the NFL I saw. Is he? Yeah. Interestante. But, I mean, when he came in, uh, I don't think Michael Thomas took that much of a hit. I think he actually was actually hyper-targeting him pretty pretty good. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't look at the targets with the distribution between them two yet. I know Kamara uh, didn't see as many targets as, you know, as, you know he does with Drew Brees once uh, Teddy Bridgewater comes in. Yeah. Kind of same situation with both, both those guys with, you know, Bridgewater taking over. It's like they're still top 12 guys, but, you know, I think this kind of bumps Kamara out of the, you know, conversation with, you know the the Zeke, the um, McCaffrey, you know, Saquon, Saquon. Yeah, those guys kind of are on their own tier now, and he's you know still RB one for sure going for, but he does take a little bit of a hit because this offense isn't going to score as many points as it was with Drew Brees. So yeah, yeah. So the targets when Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater came in the game, uh, Michael Thomas had eleven. 
So he's still, you know, eight catches, 65 yards. So the yardage isn't great, but, I mean, PPR-wise, eight catches for 65 yards on 11 targets. That's pretty good. Kamara, only one catch, 15 yards on three targets. The thing I, I didn't understand was, and I feel like going forward this will change because, you know, Sean Payton's a good coach. I think he's going to have to realize, like, a backup quarterback, I need to get Kamara involved more. Like, a little short dump-offs in space. Like, Kamara needs to be getting, like, five, six catches a game. Short, like quick, said, quick, short dump-offs, get my best player the ball in space. Because, I mean, he's obviously not, you know, Ginn didn't even have a catch. Uh, Tra- Traquan, only a couple catches. Jared Cook, only a couple catches. You know, it just seems like it would make more sense to, to lean on Kamara, even a little bit more, I think, in the passing game now that Drew Brees isn't there to sling it. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, he's, Kamara's an 80-catch guy. So, I mean, how much does he go up from, you know, an 80-catch 80 uh, 80, 80 cage, 80 catch pace? You know, it's kind of where he's been. You know, does he go up to 90? If he does, that kind of helps out. But, you know, the reason he's been a top five running back is because he's been, you know, like 15 touchdowns, you know, 16. What, what, I, know, I don't know off the head, but I know he's like a he's like a 15-touchdown guy. Yeah. You know, losing Drew Brees, you know, if he's a 10-touchdown guy, 9-touchdown guy, nine, that's kind of where I'm getting at is his upside is kind of, you know, his upside took a little bit of a hit. For sure. Uh, so some other – you know, do, do you think with Teddy Bridgewater going in, does that uh, affect – uh, Jared Cook. I don't, it seemed like Jared Cook got a lot of targets in this past game. Um, he only had three, or I think it was five targets when Teddy Bridgewater came in. Oh, really? It's like two catches, eighteen yards, um, for yeah, like on five targets. So he still, I think, probably in that back end of like the like the ten to twelve range, maybe. I don't know. Like when you get in those back ends of the tight end, it's just it's so unpredictable. I feel right. like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he does better than L.J. Howard, so he does better than <laughs> O.J. Howard that's for sure. Yeah, Tyler <laughs> did just as good as O.J. Howard. I did. <laughs> uh, what else do you want to talk about here besides Drew Brees? Uh, just a couple other injuries. You know, James Conner, he, he left the game with a knee injury. Um, I think the report so far that he's, he's going to be okay. But just, I mean, I'd you know, monitor it, throughout pra- see if he practices, see how it goes. They said it's a, ma- a manageable injury, so I'm not sure exactly what that means. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means either. Yeah, it is a weird It's like weird a Todd phrasing. Gurley manageable where it's like, oh... Yeah, his right. knee's okay. We can manage it. I think I think you've said it before. Is um, if you have uh, James Conner, maybe just pick up Jalen Samuels just in case. He did get some a couple of random targets. Like he got an end zone target randomly in the game. Uh, he was just like lined up as a receiver. Jalen Samuels did. So you know, just in case, we'll see. Uh, could be one of those Malcolm Brown, Todd Gurley kind of things. Yeah, I mean Jalen Samuel, Samuels is available in seventy five percent of leagues. I, like I said, yeah, if you have James Conner, he might be one, one of my top priorities for that owner. You know specifically, right. just you want to hedge your bet. Yeah. Uh, another injury here, Michael Gallup. This one kind of hurts me because another one of our sleepers that we had this year, and he he's came out hot. He was having a good game. He was like Hansel. He was just so hot. smoking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, the PPR wise, I think he had like. I think it was like 12 plus in back-to-back games, and and the thing I that I liked with him was the the chemistry with him and Dak is there. I mean, he, like one game he had like a 100 percent catch rate, and then the next game he had a 75 percent catch rate. So it's like the targets he's getting, he's being highly efficient with it. You know, like seven for seven. I think it was like six for eight on the next the next game. Um, he's gonna be out. I think like four weeks. Yeah. Uh, a meniscus, something with his meniscus. I don't, I don't even know what that means exactly. When they say they trim his meniscus, do you even know what that means? Exactly? I think that. Uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I meant to, I meant meniscus is your it, is your kneecap, right? It's like in the I tore mine. They can heal naturally if, if it's not a bad tear. Uh, it's like it where like your I don't know if I'm not a scientist. It's like where your like bone and like the knee part right there ish. <laughs> he sounds like he doesn't know what it <laughs> is. <laughs> I don't know, but that just doesn't sound we're, good. We, like oh, I had a surgery to trim my meniscus. That doesn't we're, sound. We're about to give us advice about this injury. We have no. We don't even know where the fucking. <laughs> like, meniscus it's in your hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, but either way, it, it's that that is kind of a bummer. If you had Michael Gallup, he just seemed like he was getting really used to the offense. Um, I did see. What do you guys think about Devin Smith? I, I seen he got a, kind of a bomb touchdown, uh, and they they did say that they're going to use him more. And they do w- play Miami. Would, would you be down? <laughs> would you be down to pick up Devin Smith up against uh, uh, Miami this pe- this next week? I think I think it's uh, it's not bad. Like say you missed. I mean, if you want some, that that's definitely going to be available. You could probably wait till after the waiver wire and go and pick him up. Yeah, he might be a guy you don't even have to waste a, like a burner spot, like a spending money on or burn like a 
like right. like, a, like a claim. Unless you're one of those leagues where it's like it resets every week, then it's different. But, right. Which I hate those leagues. Uh, from, oh, where it's like every week it like just resets to like who is like the last place or whatever. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that when it comes to waiver priority. It's like yeah, you shouldn't be getting privileged because you suck. <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty much what it is. Well, it's like someone could have just like a rough break too. The first what couple do you mean, weeks like where it's the, like the Dolphins are throwing the season and then they're getting privilege and Whoa. getting a lot of picks. Is that what you mean? How are we getting? We're giving away good we're giving players. Away good players. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we're not just getting picks for nothing. It's like hey, well, here's wait, the first you guys are pick. trying to take. Hey, the, Miami, you, you suck. Here's an extra first round pick. <laughs> hey, no, thanks, Goodell. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I know, idiot. But what I'm saying is that you're still. You're hoping like you're okay. You want you to do bad this season, right? You said that to me for sure. Okay, so then why would you want to do that? So we can get, get what? Yeah, the so best we, pick, the best and pick. then we we'll trade <laughs> exactly. it for more picks. So suck me, dude. Don't act. Like, <laughs> okay. I, don't I don't know. know. I'm just talking shit. I don't know. With the whole <laughs> Devin Smith thing you just said, though, um, I don't. I don't know if I would be going to get him. I know he had the long bomb touchdown, and I guess that's always a possibility again. Uh, if I was going to grab anyone, it'd probably be Randall Cobb, just because he's been seeing. A, a huge target. I mean, a huge target. Show. Uh, snap percentage wise, he's like been on the field a ton. And I mean, the numbers aren't crazy, but I mean, f- uh, four receptions on five targets for 69 yards one game. And then the next game, five receptions on six targets for tw- on 24 yards isn't very good. But PPR wise, it seems like he's getting, um, you know, four, uh, four to five catches, obviously, the back to back to back games. Uh, and no Michael Gallup. I think maybe Cobb gets a little bit more involved. Yeah. So he probably would be the guy. Like I said, I wouldn't waste a waiver claim or fab on it. You know, he'll probably just slide through. Yeah. But that would probably be the guy out of Cobb or Smith. I'd probably lean Cobb. Hmm. Yeah. And if you have Gallup or some of these guys we're talking about that are injured, like uh, I forget, was it you, Mike, or or someone? Someone was talking about how they dropped someone in a league, and I was like, did you check to make sure you have an IR spot? And they were like, oh, I don't know. (laughs) It was like the first week one, someone like had. I was like, so make sure, like, if you have Gallup, and you're like. Shit, I, I I need another receiver. I need to drop him, or I need a running back, or quarterback, whatever. Make sure you check before if you do go that route. Like, make sure you don't have an IR spot, you know, so that you can put these players on IR. Yeah. Make sure you do have one. Yeah. Make sure like we'll check to see if you have one. If you have one, you can slide these guys into IR instead of just dropping. And a just player. drop him. Yeah. So I, if I had Gallup before I'm overreacting, I wouldn't drop him because I feel like when he comes back, he's shown, like I said, the chemistry with Dak, and th- this offense looks really good with Kellen Moore as the, the new offensive coordinator there. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a top five offense. Yeah, really I wouldn't does. drop Gallup. I mean, I guess if you're in a pinch and you and there's like someone you have to drop, then I guess you, you'd have to. But like Anthony said, if you have an IR spot, slide them right in there. Uh, another injury right here. You got the Chiefs running backs. Uh, I know McCoy hit like an ankle. He's getting an MRI, and then his ankle hurts. His, his ankle the, hurts. His, his ankle hurts. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. understand. And then Damian Williams, something with his knee. Uh, so he's getting that checked out too. So I just you know kind of be. Aware of it, keep an eye on it. With that being said, I mean Darwin Thompson, maybe a guy you grab, just you know, a speculative grab. Or? Yeah, everybody's talking about him now. Yeah, I, I mean, you, I feel like you have to try and like, especially if you have one with the Chiefs backfield situation, a, any share of like Lashawn or Damian, I feel like you should grab him just on. I mean, if he's the lone running back this week, he's gonna be a top twelve, t- ten top play, ten probably, yeah. top ten play. So, um, you know, it, it, the waivers don't run till what is it Wednesday morning for most leagues. Uh, sometimes Thursday or um, you know, sometimes Thursday for some leagues, so you, you'll get. We'll have an update tomorrow, kind of where these players are. Um, we're recording this Monday night, so that's kind of why I'm saying this right now. But um, you know, ch- check it, and if it says that hey, they're good to go, but I, I, I would still maybe add them anyways because these guys are both playing with like, you know, Lashawn's already got the ankle injury, and Damian has a knee or hamstring, a knee, and he had the hamstring in preseason. Sure. It wouldn't be, a, it wouldn't be a surprise if one or two of these guys gets re-injured in this week, and you have Darwin Thompson and you're able to use. So I think he's someone you won't have to spend too much fab on, but. Um, if you have that backfield, you know, it, it, he could be the lone starter this week. Yeah, I mean, he, even if one of the guys is out, I think Darwin Thompson just kind of replaces the other guy. You know, McCoy's out. He just kind of takes the McCoy role. And yeah. this is this is pretty much turned into a running back by committee over there. Yeah. Um, that, so you, the running back right here, Devin Singletary from the Buffalo Bills. He went down on a non-contact injury, which is that's, that's never good. Uh, I think it was a hamstring. He's just kind of running down the sideline, and then he kind of just came up limping um, out of nowhere. So just be – you know, aware of what's going on with him. Sometimes these hamstring injuries, they linger, and it, it could take weeks, actually. Just, I don't know. A hamstring injury is so weird. Sometimes it's like, oh, hamstring injury, and the guy plays the next week. But then sometimes yeah. it's like hamstring injury, and he's out for like four or five weeks. Well, it depends on the grade. He's like never the same. If it's like a grade two, I think it's, or which one's worse? The, the lower the number, right? Uh, the highest. <clears throat> like one's worse, or two, three? Uh, three's the worst. So, yeah, if it's like a grade two or three hamstring, like, like uh, hamstring injury, yeah, he could definitely be out for some weeks, but... 
Um, you know, I'm sure we'll, I mean, if, you, if Frank Gores is still available, I mean, uh, in some leagues you could be, you know, grab him because if Singletary's out, he's going to see uh, all the work. I mean, not, yeah, 19 uh, rushing attempts, 68 yards and a touchdown, two catches for 15 yards. So, yeah, if he's there, um, yeah, go grab. He's avail- Frank Gore's available in 84% of the leagues. And even if you're like, okay, I'm stacked at running back, I don't need him, go get him and just throw him on your bench because you just never know. There's always injuries. And There's always all these bye weeks. And it, yeah. you can never have enough enough depth at the running back position. It's so, it's so crazy. Like I, like, I get frustrated with myself because I have – right now I have in one league – it is a three wide receiver and two flex league. There's no kicker. But I have seven running backs. And it's, it is frustrating, but it's like I, I do have the guys. Like I do have Malcolm Brown. I have Latavius Murray. I have like these kind of other – these backup or like secondary yeah. running backs. And it is frustrating at times. But if one of these guys like starts going off and you have those set running backs, you can fucking package trade them and get like a stud receiver yeah. or do stuff like that, you know? Yeah, it's I mean, better off – sometimes I look at these guys' benches – Terrible. That I'm playing with, and I, and I'm like, dude, you have three quarterbacks and two defenses. Like that is such a waste yeah. of so much bench spots. When these running backs, especially, they get injured. It's just yeah. that's just why they they just do. Yeah, it's like that. Like when we kind of touched on this in the off season, and we we kind of say it generally, like not every show, but we'll say it so often is like don't get complacent with your team just because you're two and zero and you're off to a hot start. Shit can change in the blink of an eye. You know, if you're let's yeah, just say your Mel- starting lineup stack where your bench is terrible. Yeah, say you have Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon comes back out of nowhere in like yeah. week five. You got to still be you're making fucked. moves. You got to stay active. You know, in one league we were in, we had a guy who was kind of just like killing everybody, and then he lost like one player and another player like went down, and his team was just not the same after that. You oh, know, yeah. because he wasn't making moves to keep your team deep. You got to stay active, even if you're two and zero and you're off to a hot start. Take these players, and if anything, you're blocking someone too. You're like you're you're hurting someone else from starting that guy and maybe having a big game out of the guy even if he is on your bench you know you're not you're not allowing other teams to right you know uh, throw him in if they have the injuries yeah no definitely I can't agree more a little extra strategery on the waiver wire episode we got you we got you guys uh, what did we just we just touched on David Singletary you want to talk about these uh, Eagles. Eagers? Receiver? Eagers. Eagers receivers receiver Eagers Eagers receivers Eagers receivers I forget what's the injuries on them. Um, Alshon was a calf strain, and then Deshaun is a groin injury. Groin injury is is another one too. It's like a hamstring. It's, yeah. it's so tricky, you know. Calf yeah. strain. Uh, that, that I guess that was kind of tricky too. The whole Andrew Luck thing. He had a calf strain. He wasn't practicing. I mean, even like just a basketball reference. Kevin Durant calf strain. Next thing you know, he tears his Achilles. So yeah. it's like that's tricky. As well, well, that I was guess. a lie. That's what we would call a lie. Yeah, I was <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call a lie. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Deshaun one that was that was kind of funny. Is I had, I was in my FFPC league. I had Deshaun Jackson, Julio Jones, and Jake Elliott, the kicker for the Eagles, going, and I was down by seven, and I was going up against Zach Ertz, and I was like, dude, I got this. I got three fucking guys in this game. D- right away, Deshaun Jackson injured, <laughs> zero points. I'm like, oh fuck. So I get Julio. Like, it's up to Julio. Luckily, Julio. Ended Julio. Up, <laughs> yeah, with that long touchdown. But uh, yeah, th- those are kind of hard injuries. I think. Yeah, I think it's it's, you know, if both these guys are out, it, it kind of it hurts Wentz. You know, it's you know yeah. just we've seen with the difference Deshaun's already kind of made. I, I you know I've said in the, like I don't know if it's off season or we've said it in season, but Deshaun like I think it's like he makes his quarterbacks yards per like attempt like go up like at least a few like yards per attempt, and you know he's just that that deep threat. So it's not having him in the offense, and you lose all Alshon. Carson Wentz is going to take a little bit of hit if both these guys are out. Yeah. So just monitor it, keep an eye on it. I mean, if those guys do miss, you, would you feel comfortable grabbing like an Aguilar or, or like a JJ? Or what's the, how do you or Sega a, White a Sega White side? Or Sega, I don't know. I, there's like or a Sega fancy White. way to say it. It's like, it's like JJ I heard the announcer White. talk about it. It's like a, a Saga White. No, it's not like that. But yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's not easy. It'd probably be Aguilar if, if, it, if anything. Uh, I mean, would you feel comfortable grabbing an Aguilar maybe if you yeah. have like an I mean, I mean in a PPR, depth. we've seen what Aguilar is. He's like a one of those guys who'll get you – Seven catches for forty yards. <laughs> he seems to do that a lot, but uh, I think these are guys. I, I'm, even if I do grab them, I don't think I'm playing them necessarily in in the week or two that these guys are out. But we got to see how like the severity of these these injuries as well. I'd rather take the flyer, flyer on uh, JJ Sega Whiteside just because it's more of an unknown. He is a big guy, more of a big play guy. So it's like, yeah, if I'm going to grab someone, and you know, we know what Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar, Aguilar 
Aguilar is at this point. We don't really know what JJ or Sega Whiteside is, so maybe there's a chance you know you have a little bit more boom with him. Dude, I, that's your new name is Mister Upside. Mr. You, upside. you love the upside. I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all, yeah. but it's just that that is. But it is one of those things. It's like when it works, it work. When you catch the ceiling on like those upside guys, yeah. it really works for you. I so mean, you we saw him white. in the preseason. What he did. I mean, I know it's preseason, but you know, we know, like I said, we know what Aguilar is at this point. We don't right. really know what JJ or Sega Whiteside is. And that and that's one thing that goes towards defenses is that they don't know too. They like, they don't know how to defend somebody that they've never really seen. They don't yeah. have tape on, is my point. Yeah. Solid I don't know point. why you're looking at me like I... <laughs> Solid point. I was like, I like your points. <laughs> well, one thing I say with Nelson Aguilar, uh, when they both went out, he finished the game with eight catches, 107 yards, and a touchdown. I know he had that, like, bomb. It was, like, 40-something yards at the end of the game on fourth down, so that kind of helped the yardage for him. But, I mean, I guess if both uh, Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson are out... He could be maybe a, a sneaky guy. I, I would probably lean Aguilar out of the JJ and yeah, Aguilar side. I, that being maybe, said, I'm not, I'm not necessarily picking up and thrusting him into my lineups. Uh, but I mean, if you're like in a double flex lead, a three wide sure. receiver league, like, maybe, maybe wide receiver you, three flex. Guy. Like if you had Deshaun Jackson, and say, look, we find out whatever, would you pick him up? Is that your guy? Would I pick up Nelson Aguilar? Pick him up. Pick him up. <laughs> Pick him up. Uh, it just depends on your roster construction, who you have, and the depth, and who else is there. Because uh, there's actually a couple of the guys who are still available that we're going to touch on as we go uh, through the waiver wire sure. portion of it. <clears throat> Alshon Jeffrey, did we talk? I mean, I guess we talked both. Yeah. Same so thing. Just keep an eye on it. See what happens. You know, monitor the, their practices throughout the week. And that dude's got some teeth. <laughs> who? <laughs> JJ Arsaka like Whiteside. <laughs> He's cheesing. He said, no. yeah, ma- <laughs> Mama, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was looking up, I was just looking up some stuff on him. And all, the picture that pops up is him with a big ass smile. <laughs> Boy's got some teeth and gums on him. Uh, all right. So, are we officially getting into the waiver wire for week two going into week three? Burp, burp, burp. Burp, burp, burp. He was born in Spain. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Probably some baddies in Spain. I gotta get on my bucket list. The baddies? Wha- Ibiza? Oh, Spain. Spain. Hey, before we touch into the waiver wires, I, just, I was gonna see, maybe just go over like what we've learned so far in the first two weeks, and then we can end it with the waiver wires. Okay. Wave the wires. So, like, what? It's been two weeks. You're kind of seeing how these teams are kind of panning out. I mean, like, it is only two weeks, so I guess it could change. But, like, what's something that you've noticed? I noticed that I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I've won nine out of my twelve fantasy games, so seventy five percent winning percentage, yeah, huh? Dude. So I'm good, dude. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just what's something that you guys have kind of noticed so far? I think it's something I've I've touched on in the off season, but it's like re it like offenses like changing, like coordinators, like it's something that like I really want to make sure I dial into consistently because it's like I mean the offensive scheme could change the whole landscape of a team, like how much they run the ball, how much they pass the ball, who's yeah, on I mean, certain look at, sets. Like, yeah. look at Bruce Arians, by the way he's using O.J. Howard. It's like, yeah, you know, I didn't that, really... I was thinking Bengals. Or the Bengals, too. I was going to bring them up. I mean, look at... Andy Dalton's actually doing pretty decent with the Zach Taylor, like, you know, Ram-style 11 yeah. personnel offense. So it's like, yeah. you know, these offenses, like, you know, it's like, I want to make sure I track, like, what coordinators leave, who goes where, like, what coaches come in, what kind of style offense they're going to run, like... Yeah, just I want to make sure I really pay attention to, you know, that kind of in the offseason because it does play a huge role. I mean, look, I mean, look back to the Bengals. It's like look at John Ross now. His like career almost seems like it's like revitalized in a sense because the co- new coordinator's there. For sure. Uh, something that I've kind of learned is I when the whole Andrew Luck thing went down. I was kind of you know had a theory that maybe they you know they started to lean on Marlon Mack a little bit more instead of having Jacoby Brissett you know throw the football fifty times like Andrew Luck. Good offensive line there. And it, that's kind of seems how it's been playing out. He's uh, 20 plus carries in both games. I uh, you know one game he had a monster game last week, not so much. But I mean, still, you love seeing the volume of 20 plus touches in back to back games. You know, he seems like he's that guy there. You know, and I was looking at Jacoby Brissett's numbers too. Like he's, I don't think he's even thrown for over 200 yards in in a game yet. So just the, the volume that Mac is getting, you know, it's just it's. It's something positive. If you have Marlon Mack, I think you're going to be happy with him all year because he's de- he, at this pace. You know, he's going to see over 300 total touches. It looks like. Yeah, and he's getting targets too. Yeah, That's, yeah, he's getting way more involved in the passing game yeah. for sure. He'd be a guy I'd be trying to buy in the low this week. Actually, you know, if some guys like oh, like whatever, I'm like, but, you know, if you can get him, like said, week, if I can get a guy who's going to get the ball 20 plus times every game, I mean, that's that's what you want, you know. 
Yeah. Hey, what, what about you, Mike? That was one guy that I liked in off season. He seems to be on most of my teams. So we still have his jersey. Oh, we do. We do need to do Marlon that. Mack giveaway coming soon. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do a separate video for that for sure. Um, what? Oh, I already said what I learned. So you want to get into the waiver? No, nah, something else I want to touch on. Waves what? wire. Larry Fitz is still the man. He really is. So How old is Larry Fitz? Larry Fitz is not a panic pick ever. He's old enough. <laughs> Doesn't matter what round, what year. But it no, is. I, that's what I've learned too. It's like the, in this system, you know, and it was crazy because he's getting drafted so late, and like Christian Kirk was going a couple rounds ahead of him. And I remember I was telling someone, like, you know, I don't understand why you're you know, drafting Kirk, even though Kirk's doing pretty good as well. I don't know why you're drafting Kirk in these like three or four rounds ahead. He's we good old Larry reliable. Fitz. Good old reliable. I mean, he's had 11 plus targets back to back games. Uh, a, g- a game with five receptions, another game with eight receptions, but back-to-back games with a hundred plus receiving yards. You know what I think, man? Is is Kyler Murray's coming into the league, right? And he just and, and like, it, say you go into the NFL, it's like who are you going to lean on? Who like for guidance? Is uh, I would be talking to Larry Fitz. Larry Fitz has been in the league for fucking ever, ever since I remember, like when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> When I was younger. I think it's been so like, like he's thirty six, so it might have been like maybe fifteen years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, dude, he's been in the league for as long as I can remember. So like, it, say you're a guy like Kyler Murray, he even it's probably the same thing for him, you know. And since he can remember, Larry Fitz has been in the fucking league. He's probably watched him on TV when he was like ten years old. So yeah, when I come into Cardinals, I'm into the locker room. I'm gonna be asking him for advice, asking for him for help, and like oh, that's gonna be probably my guy. I'm gonna throw it to. He's been in the league since 2004 when he was 21. Yeah. He's 36. That's weird. That's nuts. Yeah. So think about that. Kyler Murray's what, 21, 22? Think about that. Think about that. That means that 14 years ago, that means Kyler Murray was what? Yeah, he was math. definitely watching Larry Fitz at some point. Like, he was like career, nine, like, dude, yeah. when Larry Fitz was playing in the league. So that's crazy. It just shows you, though, like, I mean, their defense, I think we could all agree, is not going to be very good. And this is a passing attack where they run four, four wide receiver sets pretty pretty often. And it, it just seems like, I don't know, I think Larry Fitz is, if you got him, he's a, a steal. Uh, you know, if he's, he's a, st- a set it and forget it each week, it seems like. It's like matchup proof almost because of how much pa- a passing volume they're going to have with them, their defense not being very good and just being this, like, air raid passing attack, I feel like. So yeah. I know, just something I've kind of saw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about stuff we noticed in the league. Oh, I got a couple. <laughs> I do. I have a couple. Packers defense. They're pretty that's good. One, that's one, too. That's they're I they're pretty good. One. I was telling you that. I was like, the defense doesn't look like it's – it doesn't look like a joke. It looks yeah. pretty good. Ten-plus points in back-to-back games. I mean, I know they played the, the Bears offense. That wasn't very good in the Vikings offense, which is, you know, I guess you'd say, like, Both average. Those, pack, here's a, defense that, looks legit. Yeah, those quarterbacks are kind of poo-poo, I will admit. Even the Bucks defense looks decent. Do they though? <laughs> I mean, two weeks of them playing Cam pretty looks, well. They sh- you know what? They held, you know they held what? Jimmy G Cam, down and they held Cam down. Cam Newton looks inaccurate. That's, well, that's kind of what I was like. talking about too. What coaching though too is like even the defensive schemes can change a lot too. It's like Todd Bowles, who was an ex head coach for the Jets, is their coordinator on defense now. And you kind of see their defense. It's not as bad as I think. Part of the reason people were on Winston so much is that he, is this defense was going to be terrible. He's going to have to throw you know fifty times a game. But if this defense is like above average. You know, Winston's not necessarily going to have to throw, you know, 50 times a game. Like He's not going to have to throw on. bombs. Do you remember when Jameis Winston, he was he, he was down. He was, like, at the 25-yard line. Yeah. He was literally sideways. Like, he was horizontal almost. And he fucking threw, <laughs> threw, <laughs> threw the ball up. And then, the, like, I just remember it was on the highlights the next week. I was just like, do not throw the ball <laughs> when you're at this point, this <laughs> angle. He was, like, at a fucking 180-degree angle, you know? He's Just like he's flat. like the weirdest quarterback. It's like <laughs> it'll be like twelve for like fifteen, and those three incompletions will be like either three almost picks or one of them will be a pick. It's like yeah. he makes like good throws, and then it's like he's just like, "Fuck it, on he's this like, one." <laughs> hey, let me mix it up right here. <laughs> he's like, "What color team am I?" But yeah, yeah, it seems to fuck that up. A seems lot. like Andy Dalton <laughs> might actually be this year's Jameis Winston, where he just has to throw fucking nonstop. Because that defense isn't that good, and the system's pretty good. So did you see yeah. that? Did you see that meme I tagged you in? Oh uh, no! The one where the guy was carnage. <laughs> the guy was texting. <laughs> the guy was texting uh, at somebody, and they recorded above him, like they were in the next tier in the in the row, the seats above him. And the guy was texting. He said, "I fucking hate Andy Dalton. Andy <laughs> Dalton. I hope he dies." So 
I hope he dies on the field in the second half so I can run on the field and stomp on his corpse. Someone <laughs> recorded like this guy fucking texting somebody that. Oh, really? Yeah, like at the game. They're like, Jesus. Dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then and the, the caption was like, nobody hates Andy Dalton more than this guy. <laughs> By the way, anytime uh, from last year's recordings, I, anytime I see someone with red hair, I, I still think that they, I always think of like Andy Dalton because we always said how. <laughs> I always every call red, people Andy Dalton. Every, every redhead's name is Andy Dalton. I see like a two-year-old kid. I was like, hey, is that, is that your boy Andy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's Andy Dalton. It's Andy Dalton. <laughs> Dude, it, that also that joke works all the time. Like if anybody watches football just to, and you see some redheaded person walk by, just be like, oh, look, Andy Dalton. And <laughs> I swear, it's funny every time. <laughs> One of my favorite pastimes is calling people Andy Dalton. Anyways. There's going to be. Interception. <laughs> <laughs> what was that from? I that was from, uh, what was it, Venom Carnage? Oh, yeah, yeah. To watch oh, that. Like the ending, like, there's going to be carnage. <laughs> there's going to be carnage. There's, <laughs> there's going to be interceptions. <laughs> All right, are we waving the wire? We are waving the wire. I'll wave your wire. So, yeah. waiver wire, week two. Um, week three. Week, week two. I don't know what you'd yeah, call I don't know it. How you we, going yeah. into week going in week three. Th- two point, but week the second two point five. <laughs> two when point I said five. It, when <laughs> I said it earlier, five. I said week two going into week three. I, I announced both. Yeah, for sure. All yeah. right, so we're going over the, these players on the waiver wire. Um, I mean, like I said, for me personally, I don't really have like a list of like, hey, take this player Ooh. over this player. But these are just a bunch of players that I see that are available in leagues. And I like I said on the last one too. I hate how in certain like ESPN, for example, like if they're not. Over 50% available, they won't touch on them. But I think that's stupid because it's like if they're there, you should have the opportunity and yeah. the knowledge to go get that player. I agree with you. Who are we starting with? Uh, you want to touch on the quarterbacks here? Because, I mean, if you, if you had Big Ben, if you had Drew Brees, you know, they got banged up. Maybe you need a quarterback now. Uh, yeah. Just a couple quarterbacks that are out there. You got Josh Allen, 70% available. Matt Stafford, 74. Jimmy G, 76. And then Andy Dahl, 90% available. I mean, what's your guys' thoughts on these guys right here? Uh, I just want to say for quarterbacks is I see, I, I see people, like, in some leagues, they're talking about pit, they're, like, trading quarterbacks. They're like, oh, let me get a quarterback. I need one. Don't, in my opinion, don't trade for a quarterback. It's just not – It's to me, it's not worth it. Like, you trade one of your running backs for a quarterback that you could go and stream one. Like, dude, I just picked up Josh Allen because I had uh, – I think I had Kyler Murray against the Ravens that I didn't like that matchup. But I picked up Josh Allen for for nothing and played him, and he did great against the Giants' defense. Yeah. So I think, yeah, and th- in those types of situations, like, yeah, I'd pick up one of those guys or pick up both of them. Pick up Andy Dalton and Josh Allen and stream them. If you only had one, say you only had, you know. I think that just depends on, your, on like, the league, too, because some people, like, I notice in a lot of home leagues, like, there's people <laughs> carrying two, three quarterbacks. That's Like, true. nowadays, like, sometimes it's, like, the waiver wire is, like, but even looking then, at like Jacoby Brissett, but it's like it's, it depends on your roster too. Like if you're, someone has a deep roster, let's say let's just say they're stacked and they can get away with, you know, maybe they take a hit at like a receiver. So they like, you know, they do like a two for one or like a three for two, but they're you know they're giving them they're getting a receiver and a quarterback back, not just like a straight up quarterback thing. But it's like they have a really deep roster, but it's like they're trying to search the waiver wire, and it's like you know maybe they're thin in that league where it's like it is a home league where people carry two three quarterbacks sometimes. So. I don't. I'm not necessarily like. Don't trade too value of an asset, but you know, like if your roster needs it and you have a really deep team, you know, I can see you making a move for like a maybe someone like a Matt Ryan or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't maybe know. Not, don't go after like you know Mahomes and these other guys. We're gonna have to give up a leg and an arm. But if you can get like a you know Matt Ryan or like a, someone in the middle tier where it's like there's still good quarterbacks, you don't have to give up too much for it. Well, I just seen this guy like. He's like, oh, I'm trading Deshaun Watson. I need a running back. But it's like, I would never give a running back for Deshaun Watson. Like, uh, as good as Deshaun Watson is, it's like, dude, you just watch him put up like eight points this week. Yeah. And every quarterback is capable of doing that against a good defense, I think. Or especially if you have a bad offensive line, whatever. That's my, that's all my, my only point. No, I get it. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's probably just a preferencing, like you said. It just uh, like you said, Big Ben's out, Drew Brees is out. People are p- panicking with Cam Newton. In I mean, Jameis Winston has been not very good either. Uh, so, like you said, some some of these teams are stacking quarterbacks, so the waiver wire is is thin. You got guys like Fitzpatrick out there. I mean, that's not good. That's not good. Yeah. You don't get points you for throwing really picks that. to the <laughs> other defense. Yeah, that's true. Unless that's you have that point. defense, <laughs> <laughs> then you get points. Um, but yeah, I guess who's uh, you know out of those quarterbacks you touched on? Let's let's look real quick at some of the matchups. 
Uh, who would you be your like your, if you're streaming? Like who would be your probably like one you would go after this week? Um, I'm probably looking at Dalton, like you said. I think the offense, like you said, you, you get it, you go from a Marvin uh, Lewis, you know, kind of a defensive guy to Zach Taylor, who's an offensive guy, you know, from that Ram system. I mean, Dalton, you know, back back to back games, 300 plus yards, two two touchdowns in those games, and this is without his best weapon, arguably AJ Green, who yeah. should be coming back in the next two weeks or so, two three weeks. Yeah, so something so like that. I think once he comes back, you know, that that just adds another dynamic to the offense. Uh, it opens it up. It probably even helps Joe Mixon, uh, even you know, because he's been off to a slow start because that offensive line is so bad. But even that, just you know, having AJ Green back is just a whole nother level of dynamic for that offense. So he'd probably be the guy I would I would go out and get. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you. He'd probably be my first one. I'm trying to look at some of the matchups right here. Um, I mean, Jameis does have a pretty good matchup next week. Um, uh, if someone drops him, I mean, it is a Bruce Arians offense, and I was listening to, I think it was on NFL. I don't know. I was listening. To, uh, I was watching one of those things, and like they were saying, the guy was saying that like he's like Bruce Arians' system is it's a hard system to like pick up right away. Uh, who was the Car- it was Carson Palmer who used to play for him, right? Yeah. He was saying basically like he's like it's going to take him a little bit of time to adjust to the system. Like it's not an easy system, and I know Carson Palmer struggled for he's like he was saying like he's like I struggled for my first you know four weeks in the system, so. You know, he has the Giants. Um, you know, he has a lot of weapons. So if someone drops him and you are thin at quarterback, grab him, and let's just see maybe he starts getting this together going forward. Um, like I said, it's the Giants. You know, if he gets right in this matchup, has a big game, you know, we can kind of reevaluate after this week. Sure. For sure. So jumping to these running backs here, um, do you have a list by chance, like over the top waiver picks yeah, like in I'll general? Yeah, go I'm going to what Fantasy Pros has basically for their tops. Um, on top of their board, they, they have Raheem Mostert as, you know, uh, the number one pickup for um, running backs. And I think he was somebody that we talked about picking up last week. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other running backs do they have on there? That's it? Uh, Jalen Samuels, Frank Gore, Justice Hill, Jamal Williams, Benny Snell Jr. That's getting pretty good garbage. Kalen yeah. Balaj and Gus the Bus. Yeah, out of those, I think we touched on it with the injury of De- Devin Singletary. I think Frank Gore is not a bad pickup. We kind of touched on that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, um, I feel like this is more of like a receiver uh, type of week. There's not too many running, but it's more of a situation where you're getting maybe someone who could play this week if there's players that X isn't going to play. Um, but I don't think there was like a, a you know, and then some of the other guys are like timeshare guys. Yeah. You know, like Mustard, M- Mustard, Mustard is like a, you know, a timeshare with Burita. Um, but that I mean that Niners run run offense looks good. I mean he might be someone you can you can flex. I mean possibly going forward, uh, you know in in certain matchups. Forty Niners look good. Yeah, two and up. Kyle Shanahan offense. I know. Kyle? Can you can you believe that? Kyle Shanahan. What? Never mind. <laughs> Fuck you, God. Fuck you, oh. God. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I was trying to. I was, just... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hint it. I was like, who? Wait, hold on. Who, this is Andy Dalton and the Zach Taylor then. Fuck you, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so great. Hopefully uh, that was good. Um, for me, like like I said, it's always different. You get these these fantasy pros, ESPN. They're going to tell you like most are, but like you said, Jalen Samuel, seventy five percent available. You know, he'd be one of the guys. Like I said, if you have James Conner, he'd be probably my top priority just because I want to make sure I hedge my bet. You got guys like Malcolm Brown. Fuck you, Sorry, I just want one more time. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, were you saying something? <laughs> Fuck you, Ken. You got guys like Malcolm Brown. They're 50% available. I mean, I know he kind of had that game where he came back down to earth, but he, here's another thing where, like, you know, if you have a girly, if I'm a girly owner, I want Malcolm Brown on my bench. Yeah. Just God forbid if something happens to girly, I want to have him because they've shown the ability that Malcolm got. Malcolm Brown is the next guy to come in and, uh, you know, step in and, and be the guy there. Uh, just a couple of the guys. You got AP, 33% available. And Chris Thompson, 48% available. Oh, breaking news. Just kidding. But, um, so yeah, you got AP, 33% available. And Chris Thompson, 48% available. Now, these guys are obviously in a timeshare. And for AP, it's going to be kind of like a game script dependent. Because, like, this game, for instance, against the Cowboys, the game got out of hand. And he kind of gets, like, you know, game scripted out of it. Because he can't catch the ball. Whereas Chris Thompson can. I mean, Geis is out for eight more weeks, and even then, when he comes back, like, how is he going to be in football shape? Is he going to be full speed? I, I highly doubt it. You know, these are guys I think that should be on rosters, even if you're not playing them. It's just always good, like I said, to have enough enough depth at the position. 
yeah. uh, going for. I mean, what do you guys do? You, would, would you if they were out there, would you go throw them on your bench or I, I'd throw them out yeah, on the ground? I think it's kind of like I think these situations are going to be a little team dependent. Like if you have running backs and you don't need, sorry, I was talking on the mic. If you don't necessarily need someone to start this week, I'd probably go more along the lines of you're saying, like someone like a, you know, Malcolm Brown, who you're kind of like, okay, I'm going to pick him up, and if something happens. I think if you need a running back to play, you know, this week you probably go more like the Mostert, uh, you know, look into the Chiefs situation, you know, tomorrow, see what the news is. Uh, yeah. And it's like it's it's kind of dependent where it's like, okay, do I need someone who I can hold on to and have upside, or do you need someone to start this week because, you know, I lost my running back and I need someone. Yeah, I think for running backs this this week, like new guys that are coming in that there are on like the waiver wire pickup for running backs is, they're more stash guys. Yeah. It's not really, I mean, like, there's only, like, a few, like, but, you know, Chris Thompson, AP, those are guys you can get playing time out of, you know. You yeah, you throw them in your flex and not be too yeah. worried. Frank Gore, like we said, he's available, what'd you say, 70% of leagues. If he's there, he's someone you can definitely play this week, because I don't think Singletary is playing this week. I think he's a lot, I mean, I'm guessing, but yeah. looking at the injury, I'm sure, pretty sure he's going to be out one week for sure. So he's someone you can go after and play this week if you need a running back help. So, you know, kind of put that into effect, too, when you're doing these waiver wires. It's like, do I need someone right now? Uh, am I picking up someone to try and get upside, or is it like, you know, what's my team situation? For sure. Uh, another name that I saw that was out there, you got Carlos Hyde. He's available in 55% of the leagues. I mean, he might even be the, my number one waiver priority if, if you know, you're f- for running back-wise. But just some interesting numbers in that backfield. So we all thought it was going to be Duke Johnson and Hyde would be, like, second fiddle. And that's kind of how it was that first week. Duke Johnson played 60%. Hyde played 40%. But week two, totally flip-flopped. You have Hyde playing 60%. Duke Johnson only playing 40% now. But 20 touches for Carlos Hyde last week. And like we said, we touched on the whole Marlon Mack thing. Like, you love seeing a guy gets 20-plus touches. Like, uh, you love it. You know, that that doesn't happen very often. But, I mean, back-to-back games, 80-plus rushing yards for Carlos Hyde. Like I said, 20-plus touches. I mean, is he a guy who's – I mean, like, Lamar Miller wasn't the sexiest name, you know, but he, he was what he was. You know, he was, like, a back-end, middle, like, RB2, you know, like that 16 to 24 kind of range running back. Is that kind of what Carlos Hyde is? And maybe we're sleeping on him a little bit because maybe he wasn't, you know, acclimated to the system. Maybe he didn't know the playbook as well. But now that, you know, two weeks, now going into the third week, you know, could we have been sleeping on him maybe? I'm going to say yes and no. It's more of uh, so the reason <laughs> Lamar Miller was, you know, he had that pass catching uh, built into it too. Carlos Hyde isn't going to see that pass catching work that um, uh, that Lamar Miller was getting. Lamar Miller was the full three down back. He was seeing that feature pass pass catching role. Now they don't throw to the running backs that much in Houston as the, after the first two weeks, but that role is going to Duke Johnson, and Duke Johnson is going to have that. So, but with that said, like you said, he is seeing a lot of touches. He is seeing that first and second down work. Um, you know, the, the, the Texans do, though. They, they're, they're a team that doesn't run the ball very often in the red zone. Uh, so while I do like Hyde more in a standard versus PPR, um, I kind of worry about his touchdown upside with the way the Texans have been with that offense for the last two years. So, But, you know, like I said, he's, he's going to get a guaranteed touch. So I think he's someone you do have to go out and grab. And they, sh- in theory, are going to you know be a good offense. I think they are. It was the Jaguars last week. It was a tough matchup for them. So he's going to get his chances. So Yeah. He's running good. I mean, like back to back games, eighty plus yards. Uh, so he's, he's, you know, highly efficient so far running the ball. Uh, any other running backs you guys want to touch on? Or uh, I think we kind of d- did talk about it. I just think you know, Jalen Samuels, just in case this James Conner injury is. What was the Mark Ingram situation? I I know he got hurt, but is he still? What's I, I, he's I, fine. He's good. Yeah, he's not. Uh, he's not out. They said he. They said he's okay. I don't remember exactly what the. Um, I just remember him going down in the game, and I forgot to look <clears> if he. Uh, no, nah, he came back in, um, but I don't think the extent of his injury is is bad enough to uh, worry too much about. For sure, yeah. I, like I said, I think it's more of a. This is like kind of more of a receiver week to me. For yeah. So j- let's jump into the receivers right here. Then, who, I mean, who do you got over there on? Wave the wires. Uh, I'm trying to look at a couple of different signs, but I can't pull much up right now. Uh, I know someone, I mean, if John Brown's still there for some reason, I don't know, uh, go ahead and get him. I mean, if I, I try to get him in, like, one league, I have him in two. Uh, we've seen back-to-back games. You know, he's scored in back-to-back games, I think, right, John Brown? Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's the, he's the main target there. He's gotten 15-plus points in fantasy, PPR-wise. Yeah, I mean, he's my, I said I said last week, I don't think, well, not on the show, but he was my number one waiver priority at receiver last week, and if he's still there, he's my, my number one again. Yeah. He's available in 27% of leagues. Um 
I mean, here's a guy where, yeah, say go out and get him. But if I already have John Ross, I might be trying to sell high on him. I John mean, Brown. back, uh, what did I say? Oh, John Brown? I thought you were talking about John Ross. Oh, uh, I was talking about John Brown. Oh, my bad. I thought you said John Ross. Uh, John Brown's available. My bad. John Brown is available in 44% of the leagues. That's 44% too many. Yeah. He, yeah. And <laughs> he's the number one wide receiver. You know, yeah. He's the main you, guy there. I he needs g- to be 100% owned in leagues. Yeah. I got to give you credit when I was at work and you were uh, putting in my picks for me when I kept giving me the phone calls. Yeah. Hey, what are we picking, Mike? Uh, <laughs> you you were like, hey, John Brown's still there, and that that was one of the main reasons I have him. He's I've had him on my bench the post, post past two weeks, but um, still, it's like nice yeah. to have those points. It's on nice my to have bench. that guy where it's like a 10 eight, 10 eight. You know, he's a the number one in this offense, and the Bills are two and zero. Oh. Uh, you know, it's a, not a high powered offense, but he is the number one. Yeah. He has that connection with uh, you know Josh Allen, who seems to be a little bit better as a passer this year. I'm not saying he's like amazing, but he's at least throwing for you know low twos to mid twos in the yardage range, and you know we've seen John Brown with multiple teams be a thousand yard receiver. He was on pace for that last year with before uh, what's his name took over with Flacco um, in with Baltimore. Fla- with Flacco yeah. in Baltimore, he was I think he was like the wide receiver like 14 and like like standard like 19 in PPR. So he was a top 24, and I think he could easily put up a similar line to what he was about to do last year in Baltimore, this year in Buffalo, for sure. Yeah, like I said, 44, 44% available. That's 44% too much. Uh, so let's touch into the other John. This, I don't know why you said John. I thought you said John Ross. But back-to-back good games for him. Uh, 27% available for John Ross. Uh, what I was going to say uh, before I got it wrong on the player we're touching on was <laughs> if you already have John Ross, I would probably be trying to sell high on him and try to flip him for something because I think when A.J. Green comes back, he's going to see a little bit of regression, and you can't expect him to score a touchdown every single week like this when you have a guy like A.J. Green out there. Um, but 27% available, so he's probably going to be at the top of the waiver wire list for some people. Yeah, I think he's someone you can definitely probably get some value for. I mean, this is a Rams-like system, so it's like – you know, is he playing, you know, Tyler Boyd's playing kind of maybe the Cooper Cup role in a sense. He's playing the Cooks right now. You know, I, I, I wonder, I think he might he still have value even when A.J. Green comes back. And they, you know, with 11 personnel, it's like, you know, one of them is playing kind of like the Woods role in a sense in this offense. But like you said, you know, two, like 100-yard games back-to-back, touchdowns back-to-back. Uh, you're probably that target share is just gonna yeah, go his down value a is bit. his value is probably at his peak. So like, like Tyler said, he'd be someone I would try to be. Um, you know, would you maybe try and target someone like Mike Evans for John Ross? If I could flip that uh, in a heartbeat, send yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, no yeah. flub. No flub. Send it. Yeah, that'd probably be like something I would try and do right there. So it's like, you know, like I said, you're kind of reaching him at his, more than likely his peak value right now. Yeah. I mean, you, you never know. There's just crazy people out there. They overreact. You could, you, so there's someone out there that could probably flop, uh, flop, uh, flip John Ross for Joe Mixon. Like someone will do it. Someone will be like, "Oh fuck, Joe Mixon, he's been terrible." Well, oh, let me get let me get John Ross because he's the one who's scoring all the touchdowns. This and reminds like, me. If of, we do that, you do we, it. We sit here and make all these predictions, but it reminds me of what you texted me on Sunday. It's because we played each other in, in a league this Sunday, and you texted me and you're like, "You just can't predict anything in, in fantasy." You really no. can't. Like it's just like <laughs> he's like he just te- he texts me. And he's like, "Fantasy is just so unpredictable," and I just, and I couldn't agree more. It really is. So we you know there's calculations and you can. It's a game, of prob- a game of probability. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can change the probability by doing a little bit of research, but fuck, man. We don't know. John Ross could be n- the number one receiver You this can't year. control you if know. the coach is going to give it to is Devlin going to at be? the one-yard line or if he's going to run a play action. <clears throat> like, who the Titans throw to the throw an interception in the Super Bowl. You never know. Could have just ran it with Marshawn Lynch. Could have. You never know. What did I tell you? I was like, what if I would have told you that Demarcus Robinson would outscore Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara combined? Would you have ever thought that? <laughs> right, exactly. Never in yeah. your wildest dreams yeah. would you have ever thought that. I but know. guess what happened this week? He did. And guess who's 99% available? <laughs> Demarcus Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I played against Christian McCaffrey and uh, Alvin Kamara this week. Yeah. So with Demarcus Robinson, 99% available. He had the monster game. I don't know, the bunch of catches, bunch of yards, bunch of touchdowns. You know, I've seen, I seen someone, they said when, after he got a touchdown pass was uh, they interviewed Travis Kelsey or somebody somebody from the Chiefs, and then they said uh, the day before, they said, yeah, ex- oh, you're, Demarcus Robinson's about to have a big game tomorrow. And that would be information I wish I uh, knew before. And I wish <laughs> before I told, going, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Because everybody's told. hyped on McCole Hardman this whole past couple. Like, Good game, though. He had, he, a, he had a decent game. Know, but Touchdown. But it would be nice to have that privilege yeah. of information. The I told before. Tyler, I was like, dude, I was like, I was so tempted because I was playing Pat Mahomes. Like, I needed, like, a, I wanted, like, a boom receiver in there. And I was like, bro, I was like, I was so tempted to throw him in there just because it's like, I know, like, Tyreek Hill is gone. I was like. 
But the other way, I was like, I'm going to look like the biggest idiot if, like, he goes out there and throws up a dud. And, He's like, like, two I was, for like, 15 or something. Yeah, like, I was actually, Who'd like... Who'd you play for, Emin said? Fucking Marvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but this is saying it's unpredictable. I mean, yeah. Marvin Jones, you had these other receivers going against Casey Hayward and Desmond King, who are two of the best corners in the you league. You tell me, Mr. Yeah. Upside went with the more reliable pick. Well, what something. I did is I looked at the cornerback matchups, and Desmond King was slated to go against uh, Kenny Galladay. Or no, King was uh, against Am- Amandola, and then uh, yeah, Verrett K- was uh, Casey against Hayward. Gall- Casey Hayward. Casey Hayward was going. So he, and, he, and then he had uh, my boy Mikey Davis is out with a hamstring injury. So that's like the third string corner who gave up like. I can't even tell you how many yards last week and did this week too, but it has to go to Galladay over Jones. They still have to somewhat have someone throw him the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with that being said, you know how people are. They overreact. They see Demarcus Robinson come out and have this monster game. He's for sure going to get grabbed in a ton of leagues. He's he's definitely not going to be ninety nine percent available. That's for sure. Well, I mean, do you think this is just a one week game? Do you think it is he someone you're trying to go grab? Do you think it's still McCall M- M- Hardman? I mean, it's. I mean, Sammy Watkins had a dud game this one. He's still, but Sammy Wilkins still had 13 targets. Yeah. And I think it's, it's you know, I'm looking right now at the targets. It's it's six and six for Hardman. Um, I mean, I don't know. Fucking Mahomes looks like he's going to throw four touchdowns every week. So it's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's like he, the, these these guys are still, it's going to be Watkins as the one. It's going to be Kelsey as, you know, the one in a sense, but the tight end. Uh, the running backs are still going to see their target. So it's like, I, I mean, and I feel like you're gambling with which one of those guys is going to hit the home runs that week, but it's not a bad gamble to take because you can see the upside if it's, you know, Mahomes throws four touchdowns every week. So For sure. I think you grab them, and like you said, it's just an, it's they're, they're more of the upside plays where it's like I'm playing this guy to get one or two home runs and go off for a big game. But at the same time, if they get three for 36, I got to understand that that's kind of what I'm playing them for is I'm playing them either for the two or three for 36 or 20 yards or I'm playing them for the 100 plus and a touchdown or two. Yeah. I mean, like I say it all the time, I'd rather have a guy and throw him on my bench and have him put up 30 points on my bench than now you started him and now I'm thinking like, oh, man, you just got 30 points from this guy. So points on my bench don't hurt me. Points on your starting lineup, they hurt me. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of the guys here, and these are just kind of guys also, like I said, like what have we learned so far kind of through, through the first two weeks is that, uh, I mean, uh, Marquise Hollywood Brown and Terry McLaurin, these guys are seem like they're going to be the real deal. Like th- these rookies are – they came in and they're making an impact immediately. Marquise Brown has, the, I think he's like the third most yards in two his first two starts in the NFL. Yeah. And I think the this up next guy is like Anquan Bolden and like some, uh, and then I think Terry McLaurin is actually like number six. Is he? Yeah. I feel like if, there, if, if Marquise Brown wasn't like doing what he did, then <coughs> like McLaurin's actually like Tyler said as a rookie, he's putting up like you just he's said, put up 187 yards in two in two in his first two starts. Yeah, like Marquise Brown is getting someone, more of the fl- like the I guess you could say because well, like, he had attention. like two he got 233 yards in two starts. Yeah, that's pretty good. No, that's I'm saying it's good, but like like don't let McLaurin's like what he's done like like Tyler said too. It's pretty like, impressive. It's, it's pretty impressive in his own too, especially with Case Keenum throwing him the ball yeah. too. Yeah, but. Well, Hollywood Brown, he's 25% available. And and the thing last week that we kind of noticed is he only played 14 snaps. So he didn't play a ton of snaps. But I was just going through the snaps this week to see, you know, if he it's had like a 65, uptick. right? He, so he played 51 snaps this week, which is way more, uh, way more than the week one. But 51 snaps for Hollywood Brown, that was actually the most on the team out of any wide receiver. Yeah. So he went from not playing that much They were to, like, let's test boom, him out. Yeah. Oh, this works? And okay. you, you like seeing that. You like seeing yeah. that. So it wasn't like okay, he had two gadget plays or two broken plays where he got these long touchdowns. Like no, he's he was on the field fifty one percent more than any other wide receiver out there. That's something you like to see. Twenty five percent available. He needs to be a hundred percent owned. Yeah. yeah, you have to you have to grab him. And then uh, Terry McLaurin too. Like you said, he, he's I get, like you said, you pretty much hit it around the head. You know, if, if Hollywood Brown wasn't stealing the shine. You know, McLaurin would be the guy they're talking about, and maybe he's just not that that sexy of a name because he's on the Redskins and they're they're struggling, they're zero and two, and so maybe that's not what it is. But he is the number one there, and it's only a matter of time until Dwayne Haskins takes over, and then you know those guys obviously, you know we touched on the Mason Rudolph James Washington thing because they played in college. This is the same scenario. Dwayne ha- Dwayne Haskins, Terry McLaurin uh, played in Ohio State together. I didn't know this either too. I was listening to a different podcast, and the guy was saying. After they drafted Dwayne Haskins, he went and called the GM, and he said, hey, what? Well, I need you to draft either Paris Campbell, who played in Ohio State, or McLaurin, and I need I need you to get one of these guys for me going forward. And so they Dwayne listened Haskins to him. Dwayne Haskins did? Yeah. Oh, really? So that's pretty cool, you know? And then yeah. for them to actually listen to him and be like, okay, like, yeah, like we want to get one of your guys for you. Remember when the Redskins, uh, was it the GM, or when Kirk Cousins still played there? 
Yeah. Do you remember when Kirk Cousins won that game in like overtime? And then he's like, he ran up to, uh, he ran up to the GM or like the owner. He's like, how you like that? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah. I'll find the sound, but I'll play it. <laughs> it's so funny. Yes, but, but yeah, it's but fi- fifty-nine percent available, McLaurin. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's just funny hearing like them hit their new quarterback that's been on that team for five minutes. They're like, whatever you say. Yeah. After they you. had this beef, they wouldn't pay Kirk Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> now they got this guy. They listen to him immediately. Yeah, I was I was actually uh, I was l- listening to like another podcast too, and they were like, oh well, I don't know. The thing I don't know about McLaurin is what if Case Keenum, you know, he's gonna get benched for Haskins, and I was in my head, I was like. Bro, I was like, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Because no, like you just said, thing. I'm like, if anything, like, it could be a good thing. They have that college, you know, they played together in college. Like you just said, yeah. they went out and said, go get him. So I'm not really worried about him if Case Keenum gets benched. But, you know, seven targets, nine targets, you know, he's seeing some big play targets too. So, and this team's not very good. They're going to be chasing almost every game. Yeah, and they, they just, they don't have a true number one. I mean, Josh Doxson didn't work out. They released him. You know, Paul Richardson's just a guy, you know, like a savvy veteran. Trey Quinn's more of an underneath PPR kind of guy, if that. I mean, Vernon Davis is there because Jordan Reed's one concussion away from going simple jack on us. And it's <laughs> just like he's the, he's the guy, you know. So you, you, if, you can get, if you have the opportunity to get a wide receiver one from a team, you want to get that out there. Yeah. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. Ready? You like that? You like that? <laughs> we do like that. What did you play? <laughs> he's like walking through the, he's walking through the hallway. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Just screaming. <laughs> so funny. You uh, so you want to know one of the guys that I like this week on the waiver wire? What? It's this guy right here. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it? <laughs> His name is. Do you know the song this is? Yeah. He plays for the Jaguars. His name is DJ Chuck. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Chark from the Jacksonville Jaguars, 75, uh, 78% available. Um, we kind of touched on this, you know, when the, the, the backup came in. The Gardner. The Gardner, yeah. We're talking about how <laughs> Nick Foles, obviously, you know, he had the rapport with DD, or not the rapport, but he targets the slot receivers a lot. So we like DD. You know, and I was kind of telling you, like, okay, well, this Minshaw guy, he, you know, second team guy. So he's playing with all these second team receivers, kind of. Or, you know, who does he have a rapport with? Who does who has he kind of been practicing with more throughout training camp and all that stuff? And honestly, it looked like it looks like it could be DJ Shark. You know, he he's lead, he leads the team in targets, receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Uh, you know, some good games for him. You know, back to back games. And I think you know he could be a guy who you know, D.D. Westbrook didn't do anything last week. And oh, you he know, had a touchdown last week. No, no, did you not the week this one? Week. He did, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, week one he did, yeah, yeah, pardon. But I mean, back to back games, DJ Chark 15 plus points in half point PPR leagues. Uh, you know, game one, four catches, 146 yards, and a touchdown. Then last week, seven catches, 55 yards, and another touchdown there. So, I mean, if there's gonna be one guy, you know, I might be shifting away from DD and more towards the DJ Chark side. Yeah, I think he's kind of like he just said it was. Didi was looking good when Keenum was there, and then Keenum's not there. Or Foles, yeah. Or Foles, yeah. Um, you know, it's like you said, it's a rep. Like it seems like this is gonna be. He's gonna be the the main target as long as uh, the Gardner Minshew is there. The Gardner. The Gardner. I mean, watch next week. Dito will have like ten targets. <laughs> <laughs> sure, right? That's, not what That's fantasy football for you, boys. Yeah, it truly is. All right, last week, this week we're gonna go with DJ Chark. All right. Next week, we're going to mix it up. We're going to give D.D., okay? okay. And then the week after that, we're going to put Jalen Ramsey at wide receiver. And then trade him. And then trade him. Did you, see, did you hear that? Uh, was Guardian Minshew, um, his pregame thing is he just stretches with just his jog strap on only? No way. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading yeah. it right now. Gardner Minshew stretches pregame in the locker room with nothing but a jog strap on. Do you know? Did you? I think I talked about it with just Tyler here is that he uh, – he didn't even really want to play football like anymore. He wanted to be a coach. Really? <laughs> he he wanted to be like a he wanted to go be like an assistant coach for Coach Saban. <laughs> really? And, and he did, he was like, but then he got he got picked up by the Jaguars, and he was like, I guess I'll play. I guess I'll make some money. Fuck <laughs> and then he fucking now he's a started quarterback, and he's just like <laughs> killing it. Pretty crazy. It's weird how the world works. Anyways, 
Uh, uh, any other receivers you guys want to touch on, or are you going to jump into these tight ends? We'll talk, jump into these tight ends real quick. Of, what about, uh, the, you know, is anyone in the San Francisco situation? You know, are you lo- looking into, what's his name? Um, Marquise Goodwin did pretty decent. Yeah, or Debo, Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel. Um, I mean, if there's one I'm going to hold on to, I, I'd probably lean Debo Samuel. Samuel, I touched on that uh, in one of the other episodes, that he'd probably be my favorite guy. But you were saying before we uh, started recording that, what, eight different receivers had a catch and five different running backs had a rush or something like that? Six running backs and eight. Six running backs rushed the ball. Or six different people rushed the ball and eight different people caught passes from. So they're just spreading the ball out. So the ball is just like everybody's got the ball, you know. So it's hard to say. It's like one sec- – that's why it's like the Raheem Mostar. It's like, yeah, go pick him up. But it's like, Jesus, dude. It's like, Who's going to get the ball? Is it going to be – in the red zone, who the fuck is it? Is it going to be Matt Breida? Is it going to be Raheem? Is it going to be Kyle Yushek? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to add one of those guys, I'd probably be on the Debo side. But um, I mean, you still got guys like Jalen Hurd, who's they were raving about him in, in uh, training camp, you know, saying he could be actually the new number one. And then you got guys like, you know, Kittle right here. He hasn't really had a monster game yet. He hasn't even eclipsed over – he hasn't had a game over 55 yards yet. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he could, he's definitely going to be in store for some big games going forward as well. Yeah. I think with Debo, would be someone I wouldn't like spend like too much money on or too much uh, or burn a thing. I would just see if once waiver runs, if he's there, then he'd be someone. Yeah, or like grab him, but not burn anything on him. For sure. Any other receivers? Um, Gucci. Yeah, I think I'm good on the receivers. All good. Oh, you want to touch some tight ends? Tight ends right here. Uh, I mean, the tight end landscape's pretty thin. Uh, I don't know how. (laughs) But Mark Andrews is available in 30% of leagues, and I would like to think that number jumps up to 100% with the games that he's had. Yeah. If it's if he's available in your league. But it's hard, it's hard, dude, because like, it's like he got a touchdown, and then all of a sudden Hayden Hurst got a touchdown. Yeah, but he had one target for like yeah. a two-yard touchdown. Okay. And Mark Andrews is like 100 yeah, yards. Yeah, Mike, shut the fuck up. Back to back weeks. I, he's someone I'm kind of like, I wish I would have taken some. Like, I had him on my radar, but like the preseason kind of like deterred me away from him a little bit because it's like, I was thinking about him, but it was like, you know, it was like, oh, like, you know, Hayden Hurst had more snaps than him in the preseason, and so and so had more snaps in the preseason. But all the like hype in the offseason was like, like Mark Andrews is going to be the guy, basically, is what they were saying. But then you'd watch the preseason, and it's like, oh, it's Hurst and who's the other one, Max, whatever Williams, were seeing more snaps than Nick, him in the Nick preseason. Nick Boyle too. Nick Boyle, something. and it's like, so he was like barely going to be on the field, but it's like, you know, you're seeing what he's doing now. So it's like kind of a little mad I didn't like take a couple gambles on him and try and just like, you know. Like listen to what I was like, you know, reading that this, he's going to be like the bit main tight end there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he is sh- splitting snaps with these other tight ends, so I think I think he's only playing like forty percent of the snaps. But he, when he's in there, he's getting targeted. He's like yeah. the receiving tight end. Just something that I kind of did is I, I didn't have a tight end, and I I drafted a couple a couple tight ends late. Um, I, I drafted Darren Waller, who we're going to touch on in a second, and then I drafted Mark Andrews as well. I ended up flipping Darren Waller and Kyler Murray for Evan Ingram. So I still had a Mark Andrews, but obviously Evan Ingram, I'm thinking that's my starter. Andrews is just kind of like a depth play. And then my quarterbacks that week were Matt Ryan and Big Ben, but the matchups were just terrible, and I, I didn't like it. So I, I, I don't know. I'm an idiot for dropping Mark Andrews. I dropped him to get Stafford that week. It was a good spot start for Stafford because he put up the fourth highest points for a quarterback that week. But looking back, now I'm an idiot because Mark Andrews is, like, the number one tight end. Right. And someone got him off the waiver wire. <laughs> I mean, it was it was the Dolphins and it was the Cardinals. So it's like, I don't know if he's going to have 100 yards every game, but, yeah. That's why it's hard to that's it's hard to look. Like, everybody's talking about Lamar, Lamar, Lamar. Like, even I, I heard on Colin Coward, he's like, oh, if we give Lamar credit, we got to give Tom Brady credit for fucking up the Dolphins. It's like... How about you give neither credit? It's the fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like why, <laughs> like Lamar Jackson's like I I don't I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. Yeah, but like I just, it's when those you, might be his two best games. Right, like the like, season, like strength of schedule, like easiest opponent wise yeah. on defense. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, just saying. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. So yeah, Andrews thirty percent available. Then he got Darren Waller. 22% available. He had another good game. He was like 6 for 68. So back-to-back games, uh, seven receptions, and then six receptions. I mean, I feel like with the Raiders offense, it's Tyrell Williams, Josh Jacobs, and then Darren Waller. Yeah. And, th- and that's yeah. it. Like, that's, all, that's literally their Actually, I know offense. Tyrell Williams, got a, he had a hamstring issue uh, pop up. He popped up in like the injury report, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, so he's someone we got to monitor situation going into this week, too. I mean, if he's out, that even that just boosts Darren Waller's uh, 
Uh, you know, I think Darren Waller finishes, and but I mean, both those guys, they're going to be top ten tight ends, Waller and Andrews, 10. and they're available in twenty plus percent of leagues. And like, even if you, he's your backup. Like I said, I'd rather have these guys balling out on my bench than scoring against me. And then it's also, it's also trade equity. You know, like, you know, maybe you get you get a Waller who's just consistently put up putting up nice points, and maybe you have like a, a Travis Kelsey for some reason, and now you flip Kelsey and you get one of these stud running backs. And but that, and you just plug Waller into your tight end spot. So just like like Anthony said earlier in the episode, don't get complacent with your team. Always be trying to improve yourself. There's always you know opportunities to get you know trade equity with these players, and you can flip them, and you know and boost your team going forward for sure. What are you guys thinking? Uh, I mean, are you thinking about uh, you know Will Disley at all? I mean, he's he had a pretty decent game last week. Yeah, we're, we're in a league together, and you you know we picked him up for. Like one dollar, yeah, or thing, and I mean, we two might touchdowns. Have, we might have started him over OJ Howard. Yeah, he's got more points than OJ <laughs> Howard, that's well, for sure. FFPC, league. FFPC, yeah. yeah, and that's a good lead too for point and a half per reception. Yeah, yeah. dude, Russell Wilson, his accuracy last week was 29 for 35. This is like accuracy is like insane for yeah. sure, pretty wild. But yeah, I mean, uh. I mean, I guess if you don't have a tight end, go ahead and grab him. And I mean, it was one week, but uh, you know, the, he did show a little bit of, um, you know, big play upside, and he, you know, he was making some plays before he was towards ACL, whatever it was last year in the first couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe he's you know a guy you play week to week in a, in a good matchup where the CX might have to throw a little more. For sure. But I mean, like it depends on your like if you're thin and tight end. I mean, I say you just go get him and just see what he is. Yeah. So then you also got T.J. Hawkinson. He's twenty percent available. He had the monster week one, and then last week, I think he had one catch for like six yards. Yeah. I mean, what's your stance on Hawkinson? Are you you holding tight? You know, some people are going to drop him after this week. Yeah, I don't think you drop him because I think he still is talented. But I, I the week one was like it was the Cardinals, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was like I remember watching the highlights and he like like two of his plays, bro. Like he was like there was like it seemed like there was no one within even like 10, 15 yards of him. Yeah. So like it was some big plays, but I think he's still <clears> going to have his weeks where you use him. You know. Uh, he's a rookie, so there is, you know, going to be some growing pains as a tight end too. There just always is, uh, but I don't think you drop him yet just because he had a one for seven. So are we, have we found like one of the first trends of the NFL? It's uh, you know, play your tight ends against the Cardinals. You got Hawkinson have a monster <laughs> game. You have Mark Andrews play a monster game. Now you have Greg Olson next week. They're playing the Cardinals. I know he was available mm, in, in that's a, a good, good amount of up. leagues. Yeah. Is is this a trend? Maybe possibly it's like, hey, you're starting your tight ends against the Cardinals because they're just they just can't defend against. The I tight think end. that's a good tight end pickup too. Yeah, if you can, I don't know what. Yeah, his Greg Olson's on. there. I mean, Cam's always relied on him. Like, you know, he's always targeted him. I think he had nine targets last week or something like that. He had, did he go over 100 yards last week? He did Olsen. over 100 yards. Yeah, because yeah. I said he wasn't going to do good, and he was like, hold my beer. <laughs> You know, tight end thins, and if you can get someone that's reliable week to week, like uh, if Elson can be like kind of what Delaney Walker was like two, three years ago with Mariota, where he's just week after week, it's like, yeah, maybe he doesn't have the hugest games, but I mean, tight end gets ugly. And if he can get you like five for 55 or six for, you know, 60, and when he scores, it's a bonus, you know, you got you to gotta like that at your tight end position. Yeah, he's forty two percent available. Owned. So, and like I said, maybe this is a this is a trend. You know, where the tight you start your tight ends against the Cardinals. I mean, and like if you don't have one, I mean, why not? Like if at this point, if I have like an OJ Howard or something like that, or Jimmy Graham or Jared Cook, I'm saying fuck it. And I'm just like, yeah, let me let me just let me see what happens with it. Yeah, I agree. Um, any other tight ends you guys want to touch on, or maybe just jump in some of these defenses? Oh, uh, we can I jump into these defenses. Jump into the defenses. Yeah, let's jump right. If the Cowboys defenses. D are there, gra- grab them. Yeah, Cowboys <laughs> D is a hundred percent needs to be. Yeah, in our, one of our leagues, the Patriots D was there, and I had like I had a high waiver claim. I was like, I am burning a waiver claim with the Patriots. D. <laughs> it was like Which forty crazy. points. <laughs> Don't do that normally, yeah. but I, you know, I wouldn't normally do that. But I was like, bro, it's gonna be like a solid defensive play this it's week. It's gonna be nuts. Yeah, there are Cowboys available in sixty-two percent of leagues. <sighs> They're at home against the Dolphins. Yeah, uh, that's Pick them yeah, up. that's it's gonna be a top five defense. This it week could win. Sure. I mean, look what New England did. But it it could have won you week for sure in some leagues and I'm dallas might be able to do the same against miami if not i don't even know <laughs> so t- they're 21 point favorites right now yeah uh i like that that's that is a crazy point spread it's now like, do i take the dolphins this week <laughs> mike's just gonna put 100 on the dolphins every week money they're gonna win one <laughs> as long as they win one i'll get my money worth it. <laughs> truly though um yeah Kind of looking at some Cowboys. It's, it's a lot of these is hard because any defenses that I'm looking at for this week, they all seem like they'd be more. Yeah. Owned. 
Um, I think a decent start possibly. You know, you got Seattle at home with Bridgewater there. You know, I know it's the Saints, but Drew Brees is out. Uh, you know, it is Seattle's at their home always state. Always tough to play there. Yeah, it's always tough to play there. That could be a decent streaming option. Um, that's my that's my go-to. When, it, when you're looking at defenses, just look at the opposing team. If a quarterback is kind of like a rookie or a newer guy, usually they tend to throw picks, throw pick sixes. Dolphins, in this case, would be ideal uh, person to play against. So, like, like it's like you got the Bears going up against the Redskins, but Bears is very owned, so that one's a hard one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you got the backup quarterback. The 49ers defense has been pretty solid. Yeah, I, I don't want to say pick up the 49ers defense against Pittsburgh, but that's I mean, it's not that crazy against it's at this. home. I mean, they've been it's getting at home of, and they're playing Mason Rudolph. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. I know they have they've had a lot of like high draft picks on their line and stuff like that. They're getting a lot of pressure with their defensive line. So, like you said, uh, you know. Fresh quarterback at home. Kind of crazy. Maybe Buccaneers defense against the Giants. That's I don't hate that. I was looking at the same thing, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if you have, if you have like, the Panthers D, then maybe drop them and get the – The Bills D can, isn't a bad, another bad one, too. I think they've – I think I know Andy Dalton's gotten, I think, four sacks in back-to-back -back weeks. That line, even though he's playing pretty well, that line still isn't very good. Yeah. Uh, and Buffalo's defense is, you know, a pretty good defense. So that's not a one bad one in Buffalo sure. as well, And too. Andy Dalton isn't the most stud – yeah, quarterback. So he throws inters. Uh, for me, it'd probably be the Packers. Like I said, we touched on them. I think they're just we, everyone's sleeping on that defense. They're at home against the Broncos. Uh, could be a sneaky good streaming defense right here. I mean, yeah, I'm, not I'm not sold on that. Joe Flacco in in Lambeau. Um, yeah. Why can't I find that matchup? I see. It. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so I, that, I, that I, like, that, I like that sneaky, one too. Sneaky it's one just it, you know what yeah. it is. Is like I see Packers and I immediately think like offense. I don't. <laughs> That's the <laughs> yeah, right. It's just yeah. when the fuck have they ever had a, de a good defense? So. It seems um, like this year. But I think yeah. we all agree it's Cowboys. They're, more, they're available Cowboys to a fuck ton of leagues. We'll, we'll yeah. throw that they're in there. They're going to throw up a fuck ton of points. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm putting in the waiver claim right now. So who's your uh, um, who's your uh, favorite kicker's draft? Uh, up, let's just up. say not Adam Vinatieri. <laughs> I have Adam Vinatieri in a or couple leagues. Or Matt Prater. Or Aldrich Rhodes. <laughs> or Giorgio Tavecchio. Because <laughs> he's not in the league. Okay. I got to combine two. I had, I had Matt Bryant uh, week one. And he got me zero, and then like I switched to Matt Prater in a few leagues, and he got one, and I'm like, I have one point. My kicker two <laughs> fucking weeks. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> I, uh, I, kickers are just the, so dumb. It, like we talk about fantasy being unpredictable. At least you can kind of look at these matchups and be like, okay, like this and this, but like you really cannot predict a kicker. No, at there's all. only like five that are really consistent, and then like randomly, all of a sudden the Bears have a good good kicker. It's, it's like, just like like you don't know whether the game's gonna be fourteen to seven and there you get two points out of a kicker or it's gonna be fucking thirty six thirty five to you know whatever and the guy kicks six field goals in the game like you have no clue yeah like even the Patriots they'll they'll win sometimes twenty eight to fourteen oh dude like, we you get remember we beat this. remember that playoff game the Steelers beat you guys and we we, we fucking only had like kicks we didn't kicks. even we didn't it was like not it was like eighteen points it was all all field goals yeah it's just like you just they can swing know. a matchup like if a kicker gets like fifteen or sixteen and another kicker gets like a one or a two I mean the matchup could be decided in that like that fourteen point difference or twelve point difference yeah. I was just in a league and like one of the guys, his kicker got him 18 and he was like bragging about it. Like, yeah, my kicker got me 18, bro. Like, I have the best kicker. And it's like, dude, you can't. G good job. Congratulations. Yeah, it's like spinning a fucking wheel and like landing on yeah, 18 points lucky. and job. not in one point. Like, and the little ticker thing just barely, it was like at one point and then it was like 18. <laughs> and you're like, oh, tight. Hell yeah. Like, what kicker is it? Uh, I can't remember, but he was like bragging about it. I'm like, that's. You're not good because of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The close your eyes and pick a kicker, and anything can happen. Yeah. Even the Dolphins kicker can score points. Yeah, for, definitely. Wait, we score points? <laughs> yeah, kicker, <laughs> kicker points. Anyways, you guys want to wrap it up? No. Oh, no. I always wrap it up. Do you? Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. <laughs> this has been a glorious podcast. It truly has. This has been the Average Bros Fantasy Football Podcast. And I just got to say, I got to say thank you for the listeners. You guys have been so great. And I, I hopefully you listen to this waiver wire advice. It'll give you a little, little edge on uh, your fellow league members, league team members. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Anyways. League mates. League mates. <laughs> I was going to say league mates. League mates. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. And then, uh, you know, if you've been listening, we know you've been winning. So that's great. And if you haven't, welcome and prepare to win. Now. 
if you're listening to us on the Apple Podcast app, if you could please just swipe on down, give us a little a little five star review, give us a little rating, maybe uh, well, give us a five star rating and leave us a little review. Uh, it takes like two seconds, but it's super, super helpful for us. So we really would appreciate it. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and click that subs- subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. You'll get notified anytime we drop any videos or anything like that. Uh, also, follow us on Average Bros underscore fantasy football, fantasy football on Instagram. That is where we post a lot of uh, a lot of kind of um, – not stories. What what's the word I want to say? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I don't. You write a articles? article. Yeah, articles. So we <laughs> <laughs> I lose words sometimes. So we post we post a lot of articles on there. Uh, we just posted one today. It's like super informative. So if you don't see that yet, go ahead and follow us on Average Bros underscore Fantasy Football, and you'll see it there. Um, and this has been the Average Bros Fantasy Football Podcast truly has been and that is it for you boys we're just a couple little boys living the best life okay thanks for listening fuck you ka <laughs> fuck you fuck you ka I thought you were about to play that no I was, like, I was playing, playing the outro music we're out we're out good episode Fuck you, Kat. <laughs> I was trying to get you to like pick that up. I was like, Kyle, Kyle. <laughs>